Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, really excited to welcome you here. We're at uh, Copenhagen International Fashion Fair, which is a leading fashion fair in Northern Europe. We are all here thanks to Saros Karelis from Machine A, who was chosen this year to create the Ravens Project area uh, at SIF. Uh, all of us actually are taking part in the Ravens project, including me. Uh, we won't be though talking today about our specific projects, um, but more about the support systems that are in place to help young designers and emerging designers to succeed in the industry and if there's any change that needs to be done. So the theme of the project of the panel is does the current structure of the industry en enables uh, new talent to thrive? And before we will go to discussing these topics, I would want everyone to introduce themselves. Um, we'll start from Stavros, that we kind of introduced you already. Okay. Hi, I'm Stavros Karelis, and I'm the founder and buying director of Machine A Store. I'm Callum Knight. I am the creative coordinator of Machine A and also the commissioner at Show Studio. I'm Samuel Ross, founder of a Cold War and creative director. I'm Kristen Anderson. I'm the director and creative director of SIF. Copenhagen International Fashion Fair. And I'm Virgil Ablo, uh, creative director of Off White. I'm Sammy Janja. I'm Max Lam, I'm at Furniture. I'm Steve Salter, and I'm Fashion Features Editor at ID Magazine. Uh, I'm Ole Kurishuk, I'm editor in chief and founder of One Granary. So, the topic that we wanted to raise today is there's so many systems now in place, probably more than ever existing, to help young designers to succeed. But at the same time, the question is, why do we actually keep pushing and creating them? And if we're not creating a new generation of designers, almost a herd of designers that are inevitably will crash because there's no place for so many of them to succeed. So there's like now press supporting, Fashion Week supporting, different platforms and stores supporting. So it would be interesting to hear why all of us, because actually all of us are supporting the young designers, including me, first of all, what drives us and what the goal we have in the end. Cyrus? Is it because I'm sitting here? Yeah. <laughs> you You'll be getting everything. Time, <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> okay, cool. Well, um, yes, for sure, you know, the, the system is very, very difficult, I think, for everyone. Um, and yes, 100% sure, you know, if you are like a graduate and you're just starting off your career, that is a very, very difficult path that you have to take. Um, but first of all, you know, we all have to remember that everything that became successful, it started from, you know, not being widely recognizable or, you know, they didn't have like the means and the ways to make something um, and make a career out of it or make a successful long lasting brand. So yes, it is tough, but it's not impossible. And um, sometimes, and this is because you used before a word that is a system. And um, I always think that as soon as I hear this word, I'm thinking that you actually have to move away from it. You know, as soon as you realize that something is becoming systematic, that someone comes to you and say, this is a way to success. This is a way that you can move forward to your life. Um, you perhaps listen to a few advice, but you have to do it in your own way. Um, it's not for everyone. That's, that's the reality of things, you know, and you start your career and you start, uh, you believe in your dreams and you believe in yeah. yourself. That's the best thing you can do and you have to work extremely, extremely hard. If you find along the way the right people to support you and support the dream and believe in you, um, sometimes things become a bit easier. Uh, but I also always say to lots of graduates that I'm talking with, uh, that you have to go somehow through all this phase because it's a learning process. Because the pressure is not going to change. It's going to go only higher. You know, the, the bigger and the most recognizable you become, the bigger the pressure is going to be. So um, I think that uh, they have to be almost going through that phase and understand how much you want to because you really, really, really need to want this for yourself. Uh, and I'll carry on. I mean, one of the things that I think really needs to be addressed nowadays is the idea of like what people want, because there are all these systems to boost everyone, but not everyone wants to be head designer at Dior, or even, you know, lots of people don't even really want to make clothes, they just want to make shoes and bags, and that's where lots of the older brands that are so established now started, specializing in one product, whereas now, in London, we have places like Fashion East and all of that, and buyers want shoes, accessories, all of that, whereas actually, you can't 
get access to all of that manufacturing and all of that straight away, but there seems to be a lot of kind of interest and need to have this full vision when you're super young. Whereas lots of people don't want to go on that. They might just want to end up making really amazing trousers, just really amazing suits. You know, people do want to specialize, but everyone feels they need to have this full rounded vision, which works for some. Some people completely have that and that comes naturally. But actually lots of people think a successful designer is one thing. Whereas some people, I mean, for example, Nazir Mazar completely changed that around after a while because he's like, I don't want to, you know, necessarily have a hundred stockers. Maybe I just want to get my clothes out there to a certain amount of people for a certain price and I'll do anything to make sure my clothes go out around 150, 200 so that the people I want to wear my clothes can. And wholesaling wasn't the way for him, so he opened his own store and stopped showing on his fashion schedule. And that, for him, was success. And I think that's really important to realize that it's not just one thing and everyone aims to be head designer at Dior or Lanvin. Or yeah, I mean, support really needs to come after your intention has been established more than anything else. You shouldn't really look to just jump into some type of infrastructure because it's available. You might not be able to work within that infrastructure. You might not like the people that are there. What you're doing might be so ahead or of the past that it's actually counterproductive to be within that system. It's more so just about really strategizing and figuring out what you want to work on. Uh, and what Stavros touched on is going through like what I'll call the pilgrimage, <laughs> which is all like the shitty bits, uh, <laughs> which kind of condition you to figure out, is this for you? Uh, are you supposed to be here or should you go and like study something else and be excellent at that? You know, it's more so there needs to be time to be conditioned uh, and rendered before you try to just enter an industry or a infrastructure. Was there, I'm sorry, was there any system or any specific, specific institutions or, I don't know, stores or anything that helped you? Because you build your brand super quickly. I mean, you're doing really yeah. well in comparison to other people your age and who are in business for as many years as you are. And if you analyze back, what made the biggest push for you and the biggest change? Um, well, all the, the majority of the support, apart from like close friends and other peers, came after there was something to support. You need to kind of establish at least a story and an intent and a product range because this is still like commerce and business. Um, so I'd say maybe a year and a half in, that's when support from a more, uh, you know, historic perspective started to come into play. Um, and I just worked at it, working on an idea to a brand, to a business more so. And then support could come in from, for example, stores or, uh, you know, establishments that could help me to grow. But at first you need to figure out what your business actually is. Mm -hmm. You know, it can't just be an idea. That's two different things. And have you tried to become part of New Gen or any of those support systems? Um, I didn't try to do anything. I was just, I would do it regardless. I'm really like grateful to be part of New Gen, but I feel like, you know, this is just something I'm passionate for, which is creativity and design and, tele and storytelling really. And it, it happened to align with, um, you know, what was just really uh, needed to be said at the time for New Gen and what I still feel needs to be said, but really it's about just contributing creatively to a wider community, you know, and trying to contribute something to um, a generation more so than any type of accolade. Cool. Next in line. <laughs> <laughs> because this thing, Kristen, you being a creative director of CIV, um, now with all the changes that are happening, you know, the schedules are changing, people are moving their shows from to different types, um, you know, it's almost like, the form and what the Fashion Week exists for is now getting like, cha it's changing all around. What's the audience for it, who they target, um, you know, what's the form of sh showing the, the show. So I think it's really interesting time to see how fashion fairs and, and fashion shows are kind of, you know, they're evolving. And for me personally, it was really interesting to come here and see this different way of showing, you know, when, for example, all of us had our presentation spaces. And it would be interesting to see what's your thinking behind it and kind of how you, came up to this type of? Well, I think uh, pilgrimage is a, is a good word, and then also um, especially how, how brutal it is to be in this industry. And SIF um, is really uh, a very personal project for me. Uh, it's about creating a space where everybody is able to, will be able to express themselves, have the time to develop uh, the project uh, as we see right now downstairs. Uh, it's an ongoing process. Uh, 
I think it's three, four years ago you guys were, were here for the first mm -hmm. time and um, a lot of things happened uh, since then. I'm not going to take the credit for that, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think it's a stamp of approval for, for new brands coming and being around you guys as well. It's a place where you would normally not go to as a super creative, uh, talented designer. You might not go to a trade show, you might want to be in a showroom. But at the same time, you need attention, you need traffic, and um, the spaces we dedicate for, for young talents and established talents is uh, probably the core of the way we want to drive our business uh, forward. And also the fact that you can have a brand new young talent next to somebody much more established. I, I, I'm really not a fan of young talent areas. Um, it gives you a kind of a mark, and, and we experience from buyers and, and also sometimes the press. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll follow you, we'll see if you're there next, uh, next season. Uh, and many of them are not because nothing is happening. So, so to create a kind of a, an environment where you, from the beginning, look a little bit more established is uh, really vital. And it takes investments, and that's a kind of uh, our way to support the talents. And it's an ongoing process. It's not just over this season. We, we've done this for several seasons, uh, for several years. And uh, sometimes you come along like somebody like uh, Stavros. And uh, we had another interview. Uh, we talked about being hungry and curious. And I think that are really key words that you have to be curious and you have to be hungry because it is really quite difficult. My opinion at the moment is that we speak to lots of designers and lots of people offering them things and for example Sid giving this incredible opportunity and I believe that it's vital that both parties are very honest why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I learned in the last few years that there is no I would say charity nothing so they should be very honest and I think it will improve everyone's work as well if designers will know that you invited because we want to achieve this and this for other companies or other brands or for branding and then in, turn, in return will give you this. So is there mm. some specific clear goal you want to achieve by inviting all of these young designers, and especially as a long-term project? I think, project? Uh, yeah, first of all, we, uh, we don't ask for, for anything back except for, for time and dedication. And I think that's uh, a good thing in the times <laughs> we live in uh, today. Um, but I think the, 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 the goal with this is, of course, to help uh, each individual coming but it's also to inspire everybody else to maybe go in this way because sometimes if you get, uh, it's nice to get a financial investment of mm -hmm. course and you need that, but if you do get a, an amount, maybe 50 or 100,000 euros, it might not be the most important thing for you. It might be more important to be around the right people, establish the network, and uh, also by having uh, Raven projects this season, I, I think it's very inspirational for local Scandinavian designers that they can be around uh, in this space. And ultimately, um, we are developing our show into uh, a city project, not just SIF uh, and our art show, but we have a big urban project mm -hmm. going around us uh, for the next five years. And it's a way for, for this business to attract attention to Copenhagen, mm -hmm. but also it's a very livable city, so we would like more people to bring their creativity here. But that's not a necessarily a financial goal. No, this. no, I'm not it's saying really that. It can a, be um, a genuine relationship where it's yeah, and you you and and then again, you know, you can't really pay for this because with these guys around me today, um, it's not about money. It's about if it's relevant. Mm -hmm. Do you want to spend the time? Uh, do you want to do this? Are you okay with the other guys around you? Uh, it, it's a lot of um, genuine talks you need to have, and 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 and, and it's a t feeling. It's a matter of trust as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We met last year, and um, when we are on camera, it was like love at first sight, and we <laughs> 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 no, and we we. Um, we actually only spoke for a few minutes uh, the first time, and then a couple of months later, we, we met in Paris, and we started to talk, and uh, said, okay, let's, let's do this. But also, when you see Starbucks uh, shop in London, you don't necessarily know how much is going on behind the scene. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with Sif, even though it's a super-sized uh, show. Uh, so much more is going on behind the scenes. Yeah, we had this really interesting talks. conversation about 
culture in Copenhagen and especially the lifestyle and this balance between work and life, which I think most of the young designers in London uh, don't have. I mean, if you're a young designer in London, I, I believe you start a brand that's almost a suicide because it's so expensive to run it in the yeah. first two years and rent and help. And I mean, it just makes it all impossible. So I found it so interesting that you actually emphasize that you can provide young designers with a bit of life balance and the city project, you can give them space to leave. Hopefully, and create in the I mean, when I look at the Max Lamp uh, Virgil uh, collaboration with the chairs, uh, I mean, I'm devastated it's finished tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I would love this little house and these chairs to maybe be a part of the project in the city because uh, I, I, I would guess thousands of Copenhageners would have come here to get to know what's going on and, and um, other designers might be able to, to join us in the future and, uh, and have a, a project that lasts more than three days. Um, and that's really the whole uh, the process that drives me uh, to work mm -hmm. every day that you can actually, you know, hey, you can stay if you want. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go home <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Please stay. Uh, Virgil, because you've In been here words. a few years ago, mm -hmm. and can you explain your reasons why you're coming here again, and then, you know, why you're not just sticking to one fashion week and why you think this type of projects are important, you're kind of traveling all around, and what you're getting out of this stuff? Yeah, I think it's just ultimately, you know, the life, we're all sort of creative is like a thread in our DNA. And so any opportunity to be creative is sort of refreshing. You know, it's when speaking about like work-life balance, like I would say that most of us don't feel like we're working now, even though we may be because we're being expressive to what our true sort of emotion is, like how we would like to spend our day, you know, whether you're supporting through the publications or everyone. Um, but as we're, you know, talking, like, SIF is a great sort of patron, in my mind, of the arts. Like, eh, of course, like, if you look behind us, there's, like, a lot of commerce going on, like, big, <laughs> way bigger than the room, this room. But I really believe what we share in common is a sort of social responsibility to creativity, which is, like, a form of giving back. You know, like, a student can watch this live stream and sort of see the link between being a young designer but doing a cool project in Copenhagen only because there's someone, there's a patron of that. That, to me, is the most important, you know, that, you know, us collectively in the room, we're the top tier. Like, we decide to make pink socks. Downstairs, there'll be like six brands in three years that'll make pink socks. But if you don't foster this, then you don't have a top end to sort of, tri you know, it's the Devil Wears Prada blue sweater sort of <laughs> trickle down. But then I think what's important from last time that Sam, you know, Sam and I were just pushing sand around, making an installation. Wow. Two tons. Yeah, two tons of sand as a first installation next to, but they were comparing uh, Malcolm McLaren and my work, which I thought was super profound, because it's a connection that I wouldn't have drawn, but I'm super honored by. But what is important to note about this iteration is Sammy's idea of let's open up the conversation beyond fashion and creativity and living and the work of Max Lamb is just as important as what we've always been trained as who's the next designer, you know, newsflash. It might not be someone who designs in textiles but more materiality and you need a chair, just, you probably need a chair more than you need another $800 hoodie from me. Yeah. <laughs> $800? Hey, <laughs> price is uh, <laughs> just a new... Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that just rounds up like my overall thing is like th there's a patron and us as creatives, I think we're willing to lend our time and dedication towards anyone that wants to receive the unedited version of that. Mm -hmm. And so... I know you mentioned in many interviews that you're dedicated to youth and kind of new generation is your muse. Yeah. And then if you look how you build your brand, I mean, you're very different to other people because your start was different. But still, do you see or like, are you unhappy with any of the systems that are there right now that you feel are kind of an obstacle to you grow or develop? It's a, of course, you have to be careful. Like in my DNA is to support because I came from left field and I know if you're coming from left field, how much harder the pilgrimage is if you have 
no one like reaching out to sort of like say, hey, let me just give you a chance. So like just the same way, we're challenging SIF with like a social responsibility to creativity. I have that within my own system. If you see a $800 hoodie, it should be, you know, a part of my responsibility is the kid from Harlem who's never left the United States to go to Florence to style a runway show with Jenny Holzer as a background. Like that is my responsibility to paying it forward. That I think is, that is our sort of embedded sort of system to sort of keep the culture alive and progressive. But Sammy's probably got ideas yeah, <laughs> I think on that. I'm just going to go back to your point around charity. I don't think, I don't believe in charity. I believe in mutual beneficiary. Yeah, yeah that's right? what I agree with Sam. And uh, it's like I'm just it's, not sure it actually exists now between big brands and young designers. But yeah, maybe. You know, they take, because you have, you have influencers. And they kind of, many of them don't do much, but they have lots of followers. And then you have designers who are awesome because they're influencers, but they're extra cool because they're doing something creative. And, they're, and you know, they have this following of kids that really like their work. And then I feel like many organizations and brands just leech off them. You know, kind of, you pull 10 and you have a collaboration with like, um, I don't know, Google phone or something like that. And then next season. Lost. Yeah, and then next season, you have another 10 young designers. So it's about, it's amazing that there's so many support now existing from all of us and brands and institutions, but I just feel we all made the first step for designers to start their company so easy that, it, you know, London is like a Las Vegas. It's like gambling now doing fashion because it's so exciting because you tried something, you get like so many likes or response from people being like, oh, I really like what you're doing. So it pushes you to take the next step and next step. And then in three years, you, you actually can't run the business and you can see how we all, media as well, support young designers so much. But after three years, it's rare that any of them survive. I think it's to do with, uh, I mean, that's the fine line between substance and just a, a topical conversation, mm -hmm. right? So like, when Stavros came out with this, it's, th there is, you also have to trust in the relationships around you to make sure, I mean, I know Samuel mm -hmm. touched on it as well, but like, it's all well and good saying that you're, popping for two years and then you do disappear because you do have the support of media and, and funding etc but then it's the perseverance, it's the substance and it's, the, it's just the sheer willingness to do it and I think that, that for me is the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. I think as media we can get overexcited sometimes with a, if, we, if we spot something that is, is amazing but it might not have longevity. I mean some ideas are short lived and, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's unsuccessful. It could spark something else, or they might go away and come back. We've seen that with other, other designers as well. I mean, Martine Rose has had a really kind of an interesting career. Mm -hmm. um, she's a kind of a prime example from, from my side, and I've been supporting her for like 10 years, maybe more. Um, but she, like commercially, she's not been a success throughout that whole time consistently, mm -hmm. consistently but, but now she is. Um, so sometimes it is, you just got to like really, and I asked her, I interviewed her on her 10th anniversary, and she was like, you know, sometimes I could have given up, but. I love what I did, I, I, I love what I was doing, so I couldn't, you know, I think all of us do what we do, not really for, for the wealth it provides, um, it is because it's our passion. Um, so I guess it, from my side, it's, if we, from a media perspective, if we spot something that, that, that we love, it's kind of not just featuring it, it's, it's kind of keep, keeping that conversation and kind of like a mentorship or, you know, have, having an open relationship, someone said, like open and honest relationship with them, because we have like a duty, of, a duty of care, whereas it goes beyond pages or, or features online, it's, it's um, you know, if we believe in something, then we have to stand by it and, and support, support them throughout that time. I mean, there was a really nice thing uh, Samuel said um, about how you slow down things now, you release less images or you post less on Instagram, you know, to kind of the idea to leave and breathe. And I almost feel like the media should do the same. I know, I know yeah. there's such a run after, traffic and you need to release those 30 articles a day but I mean we did do 30 articles a day at one point but now we've 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 pulled it back as well because there is a finite number of things that you can actually you know share and push out because um, now every media asks us to get unique images for every designer that means that you have a young designer and you ask him oh you need to have six shoots because every single platform asks for, for a different shoot it means this photographers are paid less stylists are paid less and it just pushes everything down but I do think one of the things with all of this is that, you know, Fashion Week is very small, especially in London, which is one I'm from London, so it's one I know the best. And it's not that 
nothing is ever a secret. Within one season, within the week, everyone hears about the exciting thing that you saw, because you talk about it, not because, and you're Instagramming about it, not necessarily because you want to be seen and putting yourself alongside that brand, be like, look how cool and young that I am. But these things are generally exciting, and quite often during Fashion Week, there's quite a lot of like interesting clothes, stuff you might wear, but it doesn't entice you mentally and, creativ and creatively the same way. Whereas, so when you do see something, when you see you know, platforms gushing over brands, it isn't false, and it, or I don't ever feel that it's false, but I do feel that like, it is. I mean, you know, it shines as soon as you see something like that, because you are running around to a show every hour, and not that many of them, maybe like four or five max a season, are really like, you know, really you connect with, and the rest of them, you're like, okay, great, that was interesting, that was a good set, that was good music, blah, 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 but it doesn't stick in your mind. So I think, because I used to be quite critical of that before I started doing all the shows, and I actually started to understand quite quickly how a lot of the stuff was unfortunately mediocre or okay, and then there were just a few, every different fashion week I went to that stuck in my mind, and you know, I can count them on my hand, and some of them were really big, some of them were huge productions, I mean, like Vuitton this season, absolutely insane, the whole thing. But then there were also really small ones, like um, Pariah, I can't remember her last name, who was the last, last thing in London, shown in a um, restaurant in Queensway in the basement. And that stuck out just as much as the Vuitton show, but everyone went there and everyone saw it. And it's not that they just kind of wanted to be like, oh, that's the coolest, youngest thing in London. It was so strong. It, and it did stick out over all the stuff that, you know, people spend millions on shows. <laughs> and she didn't, and that does stick out. But then the thing is, it's not just like putting her on this pedestal, as you're saying, it's about trying to support her and trying to get her to continue to create these amazing gems during a really hectic, three months, you know, it's from January 3rd to March the 7th. And the week off, we're all here. It's, this is the week between all of them. And obviously we all want to be here, which is also one of the amazing things, is having the time to go and make a chair during a really, you know, <laughs> in between the next two and a half months. But yeah, I, I do understand your point, but, and I do agree with it, that we need to find a way to support the gems that we find. But I just wanted to note that it's not always kind of this insincere, like, look at me, I'm so cool, I know the youngest, coolest, newest thing. It is because these things shine to us, because we are running through, you know. I think it's important, of... too, just, like, if you take the lens super far back, the conundrum of, like, young artist or young designer showing has existed since the age of time. <laughs> You know, it's important now with social media, like people think that like, oh, it's like a hurdle, big brand, this, social media, Instagram. This isn't like a new, younger generation challenging the first. That's how art periods and history has been made. There's like, was, you know, it's like the pilgrimage, as you mentioned, it's, it's the, that friction and that tectonic play is what makes the next version of the next greatest designer, the next. So, we, it's just the, it's a challenge that's indicative of forever. So we shouldn't be discouraged or nuance. Like it's like once, and that's what I think we found, is like once you've dealt with these are the modern challenges, like Warhol sitting around in a gallery with a bunch of Brillo boxes was dealing with the same thing. There were other artists that were fans, like media or art critics were a fan of and penned to be the most, like, uh, best artist of the time, and then, you know, that thing's worth, like, 60 million or whatever at Sotheby's. So, you know. It's also a sense of discovery, right? So, you know, you something like... You did your chair 10 years ago, <laughs> and we're sitting here today. It's brand new. Yeah. Making chairs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like, you either... I'm a one-trick horse. <laughs> or, 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 or you're light years ahead of everyone, and now everyone's like, Yeah, that's cool. what I just did. Well, suddenly it's found its place in another world. Um, yeah, I mean, I did it 10 years ago. But I think that's the kind of beauty of, of, kind of creativity and ideas, is that, yes, I did that 10 years ago, but it's always going to be there forevermore. You know, it happened 10 years ago, but it will always be yeah. there. And whether or not it's always going to be as relevant as it was 10 years ago and now on its sort of 10th anniversary, it kind of doesn't really matter. It will always exist. Uh, it's kind of part of history. And especially with the notion of that project, it is, it is kind of like free. It is for everybody. I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. 
people can pick it up if they want it. They can make a chair if they need it. If they don't need it, they don't need to make it. It's very much at the <laughs> liberty and freedom of the, of the audience, whoever that audience is. It's not for me to decide. And I'm not really pitching it, pitching it at any kind of particular audience mm -hmm. or customer base. It's, it's, it's like for whoever discovers it. Mm. Uh, and you're coming from a different field and now working with all the fashion people here and being at SIF. Are there any structures that work within the furniture design and that you think should be kind of implemented or the way you work that you think fashion designers can take? The, st the structure's incredibly similar, actually. The, um, there's the same kind of um, schedule and itinerary of, of shows and events. It's not divided into kind of two main or three main territories. Uh, sorry, I don't really know. <laughs> uh, like, um, I, I know my world very well, but, but yeah, there's... Um, you know, Milan Design Week. See, we kind of use the word design to represent product and furniture design, but you use it to represent f um, fashion. Um, but it's, we have Milan Fash uh, Design Week, we have London Design Festival, we have Copenhagen, Three Days of Design. Uh, we have um, Stockholm, New York, ICFF in May. I mean, every single month of the year, there is at least one sort of international furniture and design fair. Uh, so you kind of just have to pick pick which one you want to focus on, or pick which audience. I mean, now the audience is global. That's kind of the nature of our world, is that it is kind of totally global, global because of uh, the media. So we just, we kind of, we rely on the structure in order to find a voice, to find a place, to find an outlet. Um, but we also kind of like cater to it as well. Um, it's sort of non-stop, so the, the the, but the hunger and the endurance, I think, is, is a really fundamental part of if you want to be in it, you kind of have to play the game. Um, and I don't mind playing the game. I mean, I really enjoy, enjoy that. I enjoy the energy that it gives. Um, so, uh, yeah, perseverance. And I know that, I mean, we wouldn't touch the point of the installations, but, and we're not going to explain further what every installation was about, but there is a common thread between all the installations, you know, that is happening here, you know, and it's kind of like different ways of approaching fashion, basically, or, you know, if you're a designer, if you're a brand. Um, if you think about someone like, because, uh, I mean, we are all of us in installations, but there are some installations that people are not here. So if you start thinking about them, for example, someone like Alix, you know, they never done a show or a presentation, ever. You know, the format that they have chosen to do and showcase always was through films through, you know, with the collaborations with Nick Knight and images. And so that, that they come along and say, well, you know, we don't need to do fashion shows and we don't need to do presentations. And I hope Matt, you know, will never change his mind actually because I really enjoy that he's a great example of reminding that basically it's not only one way that you can succeed something. Um, if you walk, you know, if you see, for example, and I'm talking a bit, I'm starting from these brands because they're not here today to talk about this, but um, MM6 and Magella, if someone thinks about, he was the first one to do no branding, you know, like, and when he came out with the idea of like, I'm not going to do any branding anywhere, it's going to be like only the white threads. You're supposed I'm to not cut going those. To, yeah, You're supposed he's to supposed to, to yeah, out, to cut those out. It. So he came out and he said, I'm not doing it. And everyone thought that, oh, this is, you know, the biggest disaster. He became a genius just because he did something like that. Um, and of course, everything else around it. Uh, if, you, if you start thinking about every single person in here, they have, sh they have showed a completely different approach and a way. The reason why Samuel is, for example, part of you know, the installation is that uh, he's a great example that he's an emerging designer, he's a young designer, and you know, he found his way of actually uh, making you know, a successful brand. The, the long-term stability is up to him to decide you know, how far he can push things and how, with whom he's going to collaborate. Um, but it's kind of a reminder, being there, that you know, um, there are some successful stories, at least you know, if you make the right decisions. When I see the three guys here, you know, of course, everyone knows Virgil and you know, the amazing work he's done throughout all his career. I know Sami very, very well because I have worked extremely close with him. And, um, I know the support he has put. He's, he's very noble and he will never say that in public, so that's why I know that. So I have to, I have, I have, I have to say that for him. So 
Sami obviously, you know, works for a huge company, and uh, you know, he can he could direct his budgets any way that he would feel about it. But he is a genuine person, you know, a generous person that goes in, and he supported a lot of designers that are now in London Fashion Week. Some of them have been mentioned, some others they haven't been mentioned. That he gave, that he got behind them, and he generally said, "I'll be here. I'll I'll support your dream and your vision." You know, um, and of course, you know, you have. Steve from ID and you from One Granary, uh, and then I go to the end to Christian because I'll, I'll close with that. But uh, and of course, show studio. So what is the thread between those three? Is that um, first of all, Steve also has been a journal. He's he's a journalist, of course, and you know he has done like so much support around. But what is very, very important is that what you did in your installation, you could have done anything as I did. You know, you could have come along and say, I'll do anything I want. But you said, I'm going to go back to the roots of how I did start it, which was just basically, you know, um, a photocopy uh, zine, you know, that uh, Terry like stapled together and he was giving out to the people. And that thing reminds to everyone, it's a reminder in there that idea that we know today as a title and the power that it's got, it wasn't always there like that. It started from something extremely small. They didn't know that it's going to be successful, and it became there yeah, after. It was, it was about challenging the system and, it and was doing challenging your own the thing, system really. And thinking differently. You're doing the same thing, you know, with one granary. You know, you, you went out there and you said, I'm going to create a void exhibition, which basically is about imaging designers. And you start like connecting people around, and you start like supporting them with your showroom. You try to show them, you know, everywhere. We have like some brilliant talents here, you know, with us that we tried, you know, to give them like a sales space, you know, to experience for and first hand. And this is down to Christian, of course, you know, for free everything to experience what it is to get into the arena of running your own brand, basically. And if you want to do that, and of course, you know, you have someone like Show Studio that, you know, Nick and the whole team of Show Studio have gone through so many phases of uh, stages of supporting emerging talent um, and talented people. They could have come here with any single project as Show Studio. They chose, you know, the fashion illustration as a form of, you know, an art form, basically, that you can show things in a different way. You have a live illustrator that, you know, illustrates shows, um, looks from the shows in Copenhagen. And all of this wouldn't have happened because when I sat down and talked to Christian about things, and Christian very kindly offered me to come here and do this, we said that we need to do something about people, and we need like, to show in a different way, create a community. It's not about the brands we all represent here. We all individuals and world people, and I think this is the most important thing. Because mm -hmm. I believe this is a really beautiful selection of people and everyone has a history of doing something really positive for young talent. So it's more about not, it's not attacking in any way, it's more of us together thinking how can we, what we do, and for example me with, with my team and our platform, and can we can rethink of what type of support we're delivering and at which stage we need to be bringing it. And now when we're in Copenhagen, not in London, I think it's an amazing opportunity to also kind of be outside of the city where actually lots of things are really fixed in terms of kind of routes that young designers are taking. Kind of look from outside and think, is there something else we can yeah, do? I mean, it's so and easy to get lost in, in, yeah. in, in, the, in the show system or, you know, or any, any kind of system that's around it. So you know, something like this where you can take a step back and actually assess it is actually quite mm -hmm. refreshing. Because it's the same with Machine A, you know, oh. as you bringing us here, I think, in one move. Yeah. You know, we have kind of now a globe trotting like Void is going from London to Copenhagen to New York. Yes. And actually from us yes. seeing Copenhagen, it's our first time here as the smallest out of all the events. It came out, I think, will be the biggest one in terms of the impact and how many people interacted with all the designers we brought here. Yeah, but these are tools. It's for, for all of us, it's almost like stepping into the DIY chair room, you know, it's, it's almost like that, basically. You know, you, you go in there and you have all the tools around you and, you know, you have to build a chair, basically. And you have to paint it and you have to make it your own model. It's an individual model. That's why it's not a second copy, it's not a third copy. It's not like a mass product production there. So you walk in that room and you say, okay, I have all the tools, I have my instructions, you know, they're giving them to me. So how can I start, like, doing things together? When, when you start thinking, you know, what you need to pick up, how you're going to use, do you want to use, no use, I mean, perhaps it's not the right word, but do I want, like, to do something with Machine A, do I want to do something with Share Studio, do I want to do something with SIF, do I want to do something with every single company that, you know, is here and, you know, we represent, let's say, a brand. Um, it's up 
to the individuals to decide which is the path you need to take. You know, there is not one way to do. But we all offer tools. You know, social media that we talked before, again, this is a tool. Um, you don't need like, to play that game if you don't want to. I know designers that don't have you know, Instagrams. You know, they're like, very far away from that. You know, they don't want you know, to be part of you know, that. Some others are like, very vocal about it because I'm guessing they feel that they have things to say. You know, and uh, that's, that's the platform. Um, I, I'm just thinking that you know, we have a lot of opportunities right now, and especially young designers have a lot of opportunities, but they need to make their own decisions. We are only there you know, to be helpful, but we cannot make decisions for anyone, but only for, for ourselves. But I mean, I think one of the, you know, out of all of that, whether you choose to have Instagram, not have Instagram, what you're communicating, how big you want your brand to be, what kind of structures that you help to make yourself or you know, build your brand to wherever you want to be or you know your personal brand whatever it's very clear when it's not sincere and it's very clear when it's all fabricated and you know you can tell i'm sure when i mentioned you know if you see it, when you see a collaboration that just feels like it's done for product to be fast to be trendy to be all of that you can tell in a second and i think the best thing because there are so many structures and there are so many great possibilities out there to not just designers but creators in general the best thing you can do is just be sincere about it and just make sure that what you're doing feels right with you because as soon as it doesn't, as soon as you feel like things are getting out of control and are out of your control and not what you want to say, it's very clear not just to yourself but to everyone. It's really like, it. as you're saying, having this aspect of a tangible form of communication where social media is just like complementary. I don't know why we're even talking about it so much because you need to have like work or idea or intent which we've all had beforehand and then social media just kind of overlaps. You know, it's really about focusing on, on the physicality. So what these guys have done with the chairs is, is really, really interesting because it takes, it's almost like a movement away from like intangible slipstream of digital information. It goes back to like a physical notion, you know, of actually building something. What, what you've did with um, ID is such a physical thing. Like the makeshift idea of you were literally scanning and photocopying, you had to like, deliver them to friends, to press. Um, what I tried to bring to the space with Oakley was more, so much more of a, a physical uh, experience that sometimes can't be captured online, which is really important because we're all doing this not for that reaction. It's more so to just enrich one another and to keep the, uh, the industry moving forward. But that's not, it's not that intentional for us. It's just an expression, you know, and something that we really love to do. So that would be like the one thing I'd probably say to, you know, other creatives and designers is really just to have a physical aspect to your work. Be in the studio doing it. Um, put it out when you're ready. If the work is good or, or communicate how you want, but really just focus on the physicality of things, you know? Yeah. And like, to me, the word that Sam and I use the most is the, ar the word archive. As the more digital things get, I appreciate print more. I've never been more of a fan of magazines in my life <laughs> or anything. And I don't, you know, like, it's because for this given moment, once you forget all your Instagram posts are gone, you know, once all you've lost your third iPhone in the cloud is like not had the one photo you took the one day, like, you might have a magazine that has a snapshot of 2017 January, you know, or in your own work, you know, I'm obsessive about archiving. Like, like 10 years, like a, an idea 10 years ago comes to life now because it's been protected as an idea that was valuable. And, you know, young students, uh, young, you know, we're making things. The importance is the, the, what you're making for the time. The, the, the praise and reaction may come then <laughs> or may come 10 years later or you know 30 years later but i think it's important you know we're in this sort of we're in a collective shift yeah i'm just on that as uh, like you know there's the instructions of your chair that's been online for like seven eight years probably would you say more less at least eight, eight yeah. Nine, yeah and that just shows the importance of physicality right that when you bring it to life or when you can come and do it in person, it changes everything. And I think we can't lose the importance of doing things in real time um, because sometimes, I'm not going to sound anti-digital here, but it, it can get really... But it's um, more important though. Yeah. Like that has to exist. People can't lose the spirit for it. And that's why 
I don't think any of us are really worried about the next generation because there are always going to be people who need to express themselves and usually that takes format in a, in a more tangible way if it's the field of design. There's not really like this guidebook. It's like just go out and, and figure it out and have fun enjoying it and enjoy the journey. It's not about reaching like an absolute point because that's bullshit. It doesn't actually exist. It's just like an ongoing uh, treadmill. As uh, Max talks about, you know, the furniture industry and the same as we know for the fashion industry, it doesn't stop. So it's more so <laughs> get on and start running, you know, and figure it out. Treadmill that doesn't start. <laughs> but I think like the fashion fair is exactly, but the if you think about like the, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's exactly that. I mean, it's a physical space. It's not something that, you know, you can. Old school. Yeah, yeah it's an old school. It's probably space. like the, the most yeah. old school yeah. format, you know, to showcase basically clothes, designers and collections. I remember that, that because I have been asked this question a lot the last two, three days and they said, how, you know, we got in contact, how, you know, I started. I actually came here as a, as a guest buyer, you know, and what, when I walked through actually, you know, to see the brands and designers, I saw how generous Christian has been, you know, by giving um, a full presentation of a brand and of a designer. You know, it wasn't just rails, clothes. It, and they never uh, even commenting on me, you have to go and see XYZ brands. You know, you have to go and do this. So that's, that's why I think what Christian has done and has been doing with, with Sif is it's very important. It's very old school. It's, brilliant. True it's love. very old school. No forced love. No it's, love. But it's so, it's so important too that, you know, as you know, Virgil and I came here a few years ago and you've always, you know, encouraged ideas that push the bar that will be archived and that mm -hmm. need to happen. You know, for example, the beach installation or suspending these huge like trees and branches, like someone will look at that and that could then spin into like a, a runway show or, or some kid to go and study design from that moment yeah. happening, which exactly. comes back to you and putting the platform there for like, you know, high tier ideas to actually exist mm. as well, you know, which is super important. We're all human. I mean, we're human beings. <laughs> Thank God. And yeah. we're like, we're real people. And yeah. we're sort of attracted to one another things. in so many levels. Mm -hmm. And we like to meet each other. And it's sort of this kind of physical experience, this physical kind of per, um, place where we kind of come together that is, you just cannot mimic or replicate or experience the same um, digitally. And, yeah, go because on. I've... I yeah. felt that the SIF kind of slowed down time for all of us for this. That day. is exactly my comment that I want to make just Which now. I thought is yeah, absolutely yeah, that good. That is exactly what I would yeah, say. Yeah, I believe the young designers need that slower time. And it's so nice that you can do installations, not just have a quick catwalk, you know, but there is this time to build up something and show and communicate. I think, well, people. the process is super important. Also, when we talk about the beginning, I mean, we talked about yesterday a little bit back the iceberg. You see everybody when they're over water, but everything that's underneath that, that fight and also the process interests mm -hmm. me a lot. And I think it's also there you, you connect uh, with everybody because you're there when it's really tough and the process is beautiful. Uh, it's not just about going from A to B fast, also what's happening between A and B or C, D. I almost feel like the one thing that we need to be repeating now is what you said, that like, oh, we are human beings and there is this like lifestyle and thing and kind of how we can bring it a bit back to the young designers. But you know, I mean, if you, if you see around, I would never imagine, I mean, yes, we put the installations together and the, the projects together. Until the last minute, I was 100% sure, I was like, are these people going to find actually time to take off from like this heavy period of time you know, to be here for three days, or, you know, last day, or like last week, everyone's going to call me, I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, I'm really sorry, bye, <laughs> you know, like, can you, can you yeah, production problem. <laughs> oh, no, no it's, it's not that, it's just because we all understand, you know, the pace, we all understand, you know, how hardcore and tough it has been, you know, for the last months for everyone, and what it's going to be like for the next months. So, um, I'm, I'm, and then going around the space and seeing everyone, you know, working and doing their own thing and, you know, talking with people, I think it's, it's something that says a lot to everyone, you know, that is watching that, you know, you can take your time and do things. You know, you don't need to rush into anything. You don't need, like, to hurry into whatever you call success because success is a very personal thing. So whatever that means for anyone. Success is a ch building a chair in one and a half hours. <laughs> yes, that's... <laughs> or 22 minutes. Or 27 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess on this very positive note, we will wrap up. Uh, we're all here today in case the guests want to come and chat to any of us while we're at the venue. So 
Thanks so much. That we're actually human. Yeah. Touch us. Thanks so much, guys.